Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming and this is the second part of the From the Depths update on the version uh, 2.7.21 I think I'm running now and on this particular version I'm going to look at the power systems and the changes that have happened there primarily uh, fuel engines just a little go over steam engines in case people weren't aware I'm most I'm sure most of you are but we'll just go over the efficiencies of steam engines and then we'll look at power priorities and how it works with steam propellers and other things so there'll be a three parts so first of all fuel engines there's been a at least a, a first initial big change in the way that ste uh, fuel engines will work now first of all um, if I go into the build menu and look at the parts we've got them in the in the parts i think some of the components have had a bit of a, a rework of costs turbos and superchargers uh, turbos seem to be very expensive now compared to superchargers um that's the main difference i've seen really i think so uh, yeah turbos are more expensive so that's that's uh, there might be a few little minor changes there, but that was the main one I saw. So next on efficiency. So efficiency is based around two areas um, for most of the measurement. One is power per block. So that's the size of your engine. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six blocks and how much power it makes for those six, six blocks. And then it is power per fuel unit used. So how efficient the engine is so this is your I, I've set these up to all user uh, 200 power is the target of how much power they need to generate so um, everything's based upon that requirement so we should get a, a rough idea on um, how efficient and, and big an engine is and these are not in, in any way the best these are just some quick builds I've put together just to show differences so anyway first one is an injector so this is single cylinder single in injector um, engine with a radiator just to keep and an exhaust just to keep it uh, cool so on this for 202 power we're running at 64 percent of maximum and we have a stable 39 power per fuel so that's how much um, uh, fuel is going to be used or how much power is for each fuel unit and we're using 5.1 fuel units a second so this is not necessarily that um, well, this is the least efficient power wise of the engines but the power per block is 33.6 so that is about as power dense as you'll get in, in these type of someone will make one that's more power dense so that's not what I mean um, uh, the injector systems will be the most power dense in general so we've got something to compare it with so if we now go to the second one now this is um, carburetors on two cylinders with the direct turbochargers so these are just taking from a single exhaust straight into the turbo uh, just so we can compare it to inline turbos later so this is the um i would say the second power dense um, option because your power to blocks is 12.5 which is reasonably power dense and we've got a 50.8 power per fuel so we are a lot more um, about 50 percent or so more power uh, efficient than the injector and a fuel use of 3.95 so okay but still not great we're running at 79 percent here so we do have a little bit left over if required so next uh, and uh, these aren't necessarily in the best order so um, we'll go actually hop one over just to put it in the right order this is inline turbos 
so what we I have done here is routed all of the exhausts through and then it's being shared out against each of the turbos with two turbos to each carburetor um, now first of all we'll look at the power fuels and then I'll just talk about the new in inline turbo mechanics so if we look at this we're running slightly less power or less uh, maximum drive than the turbos which are directly connected we have a slightly better um, power per fuel 59 so that's a that's about I think about 20 percent 10 percent 20 percent more I think we were running at 50 or was it 55 let's just go and have a quick check we were running at 50 so we were about 20 percent more efficient um, with the extra turbos um, but power per block is a way down 4.3 on that power per block now people say well why don't I link all of the turbos together so one turbo goes to A to B to C to D because there has been a change now if I hover over the turbo you'll notice here it's got an exhaust pressure and it's 0.806 and it's got a, a the amount of power fuel boost it's applying to the carburetor in this case 7.5 and it's got a cap of 15 so it can't go any higher than 15 but the primary bit here is pressure passed on is zero it is not passing any um, turbo pressure on or exhaust pressure on that could be used on another turbo if I put linked this to another turbo it would be boosting at zero because there is no actual um, gases um, to come out of it basically um, to, yeah, no gases coming out of A to power B and so on um, now to look at the difference here this one is using a power fuel boost of 7.98 and this is 7.5 but there's two of them and four in total so we are actually producing more boost but over two turbos even though each turbo is slightly less um, I'm sure there'll be lots of people looking at that but the main bit is the um, basically serially linking all of your turbos together uh, doesn't work there will be a point where you've got enough cylinders going to a turbo that it will pass on enough gases to make it worth having um, them set up in line um, I'm sure someone will work that one out but it certainly would not be the same as we've got so all those people building engines and then they have to have a another go like us with ships they'll have to run through rebuilding all of their most efficient engines which is fine okay next stage then is superchargers rather than using turbos now superchargers are cheaper and less complex we just have to in this is a very simple one two cylinders a carburetor on top and a supercharger on three sides and if we look at this it's running uh, this is a well, I suppose a medium you can tell by the curve down here you don't want to be going too up far with this curve the yellow is the amount of power and as it gets higher the amount of power it produces goes down and also you can see the power fuel the green bar is going down as well for the uh, more power so we want this as low as possible but 0.63 gives us a current power of 202 a 64 power per fuel so that's again another um another 20 percent on the inline turbos yeah so yeah, a good 40 percent or so just trying to work that out no it's good to, yeah about 30 percent on the uh, just work that out 20, it's about 20, 25, yeah, about 30% on the uh, turbos, and we've doubled the efficiency of the um, injectors. Power per block, 11.9, so actually not too bad. It's, it's not as efficient as these turbos, but it's not bad at all. Then taking that another little stage further, what about more superchargers? So, again, two cylinders but four carburetors and um, except for the front and back 
uh, more, as many superchargers as I can fit, including ones in between, etc. So this is a low pressure supercharger, making the most of this um, curve. By taking it down to 20%, I've got my power per fuel up to 103. So very efficient. Three times the injector, um, twice the uh, uh, simple turbo, and not quite, you know, 45, 90% um, you know, more, 80% more than the inlines, and even better than just the simple supercharger. Power per block, 7.1. Not great, as obviously. This is going down, uh, but a fuel use of only two per, per second. So, yeah, that's the efficiency on the fuel engines and how we're going to change it. The, the main thing I've taken away from this is it's not going to be an obvious just make turbos do everything running at maximum power. There is going to be points where turbos will be efficient at I think very high power as far as per block goes but at low cruising type of systems where you don't need the high power um, superchargers will be more efficient so it's, it's not a um, one thing suits all simple a matter of this is the amount of power done you will have power versus versus efficiency and block to think about next bit is steam engines steam engines themselves don't seem to have had too much uh, changes I think on their menu the menu itself has changed, lay changed layout and I actually quite like this layout I find this a little easier to navigate not by much but enough to, to make a difference now we won't do turbines we're only looking at because they're only for electricity production I haven't gone through the electricity um, system as yet but this is purely for um, the piston based steam engines so three types of boiler small large huge and putting them all against a small um, piston and gearbox all trying to get close to 200 power you'll notice this first one a boiler pressure 400 and it's running at 0.5 material per second to get that 200 large boiler um, is running at 0 0.37, 421, so um, almost the same pressure, but because it's the, the, the volume is higher, uh, we've only got to burn 0 0.37 uh, materials per second to get the same 200. And finally, the huge 424, similar pressure, and this actually is running actually about the, just a little bit less than the uh, boiling changer of the large. It's not as a big a difference from the large to the huge um, in general um, but it, it is better but not as significant um, that might be because of the boiler chamber area so 23 meters versus um, 7 no it is, it is three times as much Whereas this one is nine times, so if we look at this, this is 0.8, yeah, it's 0.7, so that's nine times. So it's not a, as big an increase in boiler uh, chamber area as it may look, um, but it is more efficient. Right, just to show, is there an efficiency benefit of the different steam pistons? So here, just using a large boiler with three uh, boilers set at the same um, burn rate so this is set at a burn rate of 0 0.09 which is 37 materials a second and this is at set at 0 0.079 which is 1.1 which is three times so that works out right so sharing that between three different pistons we can see the same um, pressure and volume on this piston producing 24 on uh, this piston we've got 50 so double um, so that seems to be more efficient and finally the huge one is 560 ish um, yes 
significantly more. So as you can tell there, it is better to have the larger piston possible to get um, the maximum power out of your burn rate. So ideally, huge boilers, huge pistons is the most efficient, but just look at the amount of space that's going to take up. So as far as efficiency goes, this has got the highest power per block, small boilers, small uh, pistons, but the highest um, or the lowest efficiency. And so it goes up. We can look at, and I'm sure someone will do it with all the different pistons and, and boiler combinations, but this is just a general efficiency uh, examination of the, the steam, if you weren't aware of it. Um, it's sort of obvious, you know, bigger, pist bigger boilers are, are more efficient and bigger pistons are more efficient, quite simply. Okay, for the next bit, we're now going to look at one other change, um, or well, actually two changes, um, but we're going to go on to one of the boats. So I've, I've done a set up a little tugboat, or have set up a little tugboat using the pre, those um, hull shapes, so using the new hull prefabs there we go a little wooden tuck so let me just jump onto that so we can see that working so sitting on a new little tug using uh, that very basic design that was in the hull prefabs i've just very quickly added a steam engine just a simple single steam engine for testing here and what i want to look at is um priorities and outputs of um, steam engines and gen engines in general when we apply an external power requirement. So first thing to look at is with steam engines we can produce a uh, propeller um, thrust and we're getting a here from this we don't leave this set at a single burn rate here of 0.5 if we look at the uh, gearbox, you can see that's got, at the moment, we've got a propeller rotation. When we use the propeller rotation to gauge this, of just over 25 RPM. We're not going hyper fast here. This is a tug, not a speedboat. So, uh, but there's the basis for it. And the engine itself has a capacity of 230 power, but we're not using it. There's no other power uh, requiring um, systems on this ship. So what if there is? Let's say we have a shield for some reason, but it could be anything that's producing power. So if we turn on this shield, give it a strength of one, we've got 46, um, well, call it 47 power required. Now if we go down to our engine, we can see our actual power requirement has gone down because it's having to share the power between the uh, propeller and the um, shield. So our propeller rotation has now gone down to 20.3, 20, 20 yeah, so it's going down. So it's, it's gone down quite considerably, which means our speed has gone down. We weren't really going much speed fast, but um, uh, you can get the idea of it. <laughs> Obviously, this is now taking away power from the propeller. So what can we do about that? Well, first of all, one of the first changes that's happened on steam gearboxes is we can change this power uh, output. So now by changing this power output to zero, you'll see power generation here has gone down to zero as well. And what that means is it's not producing any power other uh, for external forces. So all the power is being used um, by the um, propeller. And you can see that our rotations have gone back up to 25 RPM. So simply setting that down to zero means that um, all your power is now going to your propeller. So for, for if you want to create a steam system which is only for the propeller, that would be a simple way of doing it. Now you know all steam pressure on that particular boiler is just being used for um, the propeller system.
nice and simple really but we do want to produce power so what we could do is we'll build a nice simple um, engine so now we have a nice simple supercharger engine which is producing the required amount of power of uh, 47 at a 88 power per fuel at this particular rate and could go up to a hundred or we could, we could maybe set that down let's say we want to say maximums and it'd be about there can go up to 65 power per fuel no problem um, and the propeller is working in its uh, priority nice and fully so we've still got the 25 for there so that's the simple way of generating power now we're going to look at one other section which is the option in here which is priorities and using that so let's come up with an idea here so under normal system let's say we have this fuel engine is going to be producing our power and let me just make a couple of changes so what we I have changed is I've added a few extra propellers so if we look at the power production um, on the right hand side we're showing 32 out of 47 uh, at the moment we have got some power I've put some propellers on the back as well as on the side so now what we actually have if I take our power down to zero is we can actually have a full strafing system where we could actually go forward we can go sideways etc and as I do activate all of those the power systems go up um, and depend on what I'm trying to do at a time if I stress it I can turn so typical for a tug we've got full axis movement etc in all directions and of course just going forwards at uh, speed so and that is all being provided by our simple little supercharged engine but now what if I want to also have some particularly strong shields we can see that it's limited although um, we're only getting a 10% working because we're overstretching this engine so I could make this engine bigger but what about if I only want this to work under certain conditions what I could do is build a less efficient engine which is purely for high powered times so if we were to build a simple fuel injected engine so if I just I'll put it in um, yeah here we'll do I think I can share some of this and we'll put in uh, about a couple of injectors and then have the exhaust come back here da -da -da. I'm putting far too much um, time into this but uh, so now we have a second engine which is producing power can go up to three well it's 398 it's got a potential of 450 but enough to produce the um, shield but it's got a very poor uh, fuel efficiency as we can see power per fuel 41 which is not good so we don't want it to be running if the shield goes off let's take say the shields enemies out of range or um, is not facing that direction so it doesn't need the shield uh, we want this engine to go off but at the moment it's still producing power admittedly 48 power per fuel but what if we want it to uh, produce none so now we want to make basically this this fuel engine work most of the time and only when it cannot produce enough power should the injector engine turn on so what we're going to use is the priority system so 
first of all we're going to say this fuel engine has a priority of one so that means that this should be a higher priority and you can go all the way up to 50 depending on how many you want but we'll stick it at one that should be uh, sufficient and then um, we'll set this one here to be zero so this would be the second so as you can see at the moment it's basically turned itself off it's sitting there doing nothing and we can um, this is set to zero we, we could also set this um, at a, a lower priority we could set this at minus one just to make sure that it's um, not used and I'll talk about why that could be potentially useful so now we turn on our shield again and uh, we'll go to three I think three was okay there we go 421 power and we can see that that filled up and then this one is now being used almost at full this one should be being used at full power yeah just to show that we'll turn it down we'll take it just down to one which should be enough for just the uh, supercharger to work so this should be um, running at, oh that's running at full it's just a bit more than the supercharger so this is just producing the slightly more power so the 17 so it's definitely filled up the supercharger first then using the um, injectors okay I was saying about the um, steam engine what about if we didn't set this to zero we allow it to give out a good 50% of power but it's a, a priority of, of minus one reason for that so at the moment we've still got um, let's just make sure yeah see the priority on there isn't working it's actually started giving out let me just change it here yeah for some reason we with um, steam engines if you change it in the gearbox it doesn't seem to work you have to change it by pressing V pressing power and then changing the priority in here if you do it on the gearbox it doesn't work it's only and it's only seems to be for steam engines uh, but anyway we're now on minus one now the reason I've set this up is you could have this as a reserve so in normal terms here running at 25 perfectly okay and then we apply some more power and our injector engine is now producing that extra power and our steam engine is still running at 25 what if we needed a little bit more for whatever reason we need a little bit more power so now the injector is running at full and some of that power is now also getting diverted from the steam engine we can see our rpm's gone down so by setting up the priority i'd be able to say the steam engine is the last thing used and if you if you set it up correctly only in an emergency um, it, that emergency could be um, not that you need extra power but uh, for some reason uh, that engine gets damaged and stops working stops producing power now in normal cases your um, shields would have just disappeared uh, depends on your priority in now the pa shields may stay up or at least partially up um, but you'll be able to reduce speed depends what your priority is if you don't want that to happen and you want always to have the, the correct speed set that up at full um, you know anyway it is just a, a thought of what you could do in theory um, with using the priority system um, and how to set your gearbox um, for your steam engine to be propeller only if required hopefully that's uh, covered all of the power systems the one I'll look at next will be jet engines and aircraft just have a look at the differences on those anything you think I've missed on the power systems um, I think there is one thing 
that's just suddenly come to mind and that is electric electric engines and that is a one minor change I will go through if you set up an electric engine or with a battery let's put a battery on it um, in here now you've got this resting output and the priorities and it's always a low priority whereas you might want to put that as a higher but anyway but the main difference is that changing that output doesn't seem to have any effect on efficiency now previously if I took it down to 50% um, output the efficiency went up by about 20-25% something in that order that doesn't seem to be the case. See, maximum power is 135. And if I put it up to the top, it's 270, which is still double. Um, I haven't done any testing as to test the time it takes to deplete a battery to see if it actually is. So if anyone knows whether it is true that uh, this has been removed and there is no efficiency difference for whatever output you put on your uh, batteries please let me know um, that is the only thing I think I have missed as far as power power usage priorities and the uh, propeller system via steam once again if I have still forgotten something please leave a comment down below Please click that like button if you think that these uh, little updates are, are good and will help you in the future. Um, any comments about what's going to be happening next in the next campaign? I've got some ideas which I'm, I'll go through when we come to the campaign, campaign area. But for now, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.